Kia ora te whānau, ko Aubrey Ria taku ingoa, uh, he uri tēnei nō te poho rāore marae. Uh, I'm born and bred, kai te hard, uh, te poho rāore marae. I've spent most of my upbringing there. I'm a mama of four and I currently work in um, environmental administration for environmental projects, um, doing jobs for nature contracts. Um, I've also worked 10 years as a school teacher and 10 years as a community radio announcer. That's my, so that's me. Kia ora. Um, the Māori Wards Kaupapa has been something I've been quite passionate about in the past um, two years since discussions came up. I stood before council and I gave a submission on why we should have um, Māori Wards and it was really about um, upholding the partnership protection um, part of Te Tiriti o Waitangi and what that meant not just to me but to the generations before me, my grandfather and his father and his father. Um, and so yeah, that was one of the main reasons was uh, wanting to follow through on the Māori Wards kaupapa um, and also to show our kids that um, now is the time that we are going to get to have a say and to really actively participate to, to encourage more active participation. If I could change one thing right now, what would it be? I would get rid of waka kotahi. If I could, I would get rid of waka kotahi. Our roading situation here on the coast is, it's, it's really bad. It's really bad com in comparison to other places. Uh, not only do we have uh, slips on the Motu State Highway 5, State Highway 2 and State Highway 35. So Gisborne is surrounded by state highways that Waka Kotahi is looking after. And they're doing a poor job, um, I think. And the council is having to step in to band-aid um, situations after flooding. Um, after erosion um, and in, in order for the council to be able to better forward plan in terms of roading and climate change uh, it would it would greatly add to what the council is able to do if the roading was a part of what the council could do. Well, so the, um, the main focus of my campaign is Oranga Wai, Oranga Whenua, Oranga Tangata which is the regeneration and revitalisation of the water the land and the people. And so there's a lot of components that come into that, but I think holistically those three components will greatly assist any future generations. If our, if our waterways are healthy, if our land is healthy and if our people are thriving. So any kind of initiatives, any kind of um, uh, projects that the council might have going, any kind of local projects that are already currently running that the council could actually get in behind and actively support or assist with training or funding or um, mentoring, any of those sorts of things would greatly benefit um, future generations. I think council can help definitely address the housing crisis. I don't think um, council is the one-stop shop for all of the answers in terms of the health, the health uh, housing crisis, but definitely they could get in and assist. There's a lot of already set up um, housing initiatives that are being run by different iwi hapu organisations um, such as um, Toitu Housing, um, Hikurangi Enterprises, and I think that there's some things that um, council could definitely get in. I don't think council needs to have all the answers all of the time, but I think if they've got good relationships, um, good communication with local organisations who are, who are making a real difference right now in the area of housing, that they could greatly, greatly assist those ones. But there's also some strategies council could look at in, in terms of assisting not just um, Māori landowners in terms of developing their own whenua. So we talked the other night about um, rate arrears on previously not used Māori land and at the moment those um, land blocks are requiring sort of a development plan through council and the development plan when you have um, 50 to 80 to 100 landowners can be a strategy that's really hard to get over in order to help them to further develop their land whether it was for uh, economy purposes, business, or if it was for housing purposes, it makes it difficult when those sorts of barriers are in place. And even things like um, 
perpetual leases where uh, Māori can't, can't access their land. And I know that, that these things don't just affect Māori, um, and, but these are the ones that I know of. So there are definitely strategies that the council could be doing to assist in the development of housing um, and to support current housing initiatives. Definitely. The council can always do more to support the arts. I think um, Tama Waipara and his crew, they've, they've done an amazing job um, with the Tairawhitia Arts Festival and the different um, activities that they've organised. It's seen a real rejuvenation in the arts area here in Tūranga Nui Akiwa that we haven't seen the likes of since we had like the, the 2000 um, celebrations here in Tūranga Nui Akiwa. Um, but definitely I'm a huge participant of um, cultural performing arts, so I do kapahaka, and there's a, there's a huge space um, that the council could explore in order to assist um, visual artists, performance artists, and there's just not, I don't think, with COVID, it's been understandable that we haven't been able to have some activities and events, but with, with us coming to a, a place where we are actively managing and living with COVID, there's got to be some steps now moving towards when we can start to bring some of those things back. And the Tairawhiti Cultural, uh, the Tairawhiti Arts Festival has just been a start. So let's let that take the lead and let's um, come in and put some more activities or support some more activities along the lines of arts because there's so many talented people here in Tūranga Nui Akiwa and it could be a great um, avenue in terms of tourism and how we promote Aurohe as well because we are a huge arts um, community. I currently do a lot of community engagement uh, especially around my marae at Te Poho Rawari. I'm, I'm quite fortunate that I I am a part of Te Pohorawari Marae because we do host a lot of community engagements, community events, things from small things from like birthdays right up into hosting ministers and um, we have a lot of um, business organisations that come in and have um, general huis or wānanga um, and they make those relationships. Outside of that, outside of um, Te Pohorawari, I work in the environmental space, so I'm currently working with both um, Te Aitanga, Mahaki, Iwi and Ngāti Oneone with both of their Jobs for Nature um, environment projects. So that um, gets me physically out on sites, on the ground, meeting people, um, just making conversations. I've learned a lot in the environmental space over the last um, few years, so that's uh, a huge being a part of the environmental community. In terms of being a part of the community as a whole, um, kapahaka, I attend lots of events that are going. I like to talk to people. So I think communication is big when you're going to be a representative of this community, that you're not afraid to go and start a conversation with people and talk to them and see where they're from and see what they like and see what they don't like and see what um, they think council might have to offer in the future, what they could be doing better at or what they're currently doing good at. Um, yeah, so communication is a huge thing uh, and I think that I definitely have those abilities that I can go out and, and engage in, in the community in lots of different ways, shapes and forms. Okay, so I was a teacher for eight years and working in a school like Te Whiro, I am able to come across lots of children and their families who have lots of diverse backgrounds, whether it's culturally, we have um, not just uh, Pākehā, Europe, European, Māori, Samoan, Tongan, Asian, other Euro European descents. And so you get to um, be a part of, when you work in a school, you get to be a part of multi-culture, because it, it's right there. The, the children are there and their families are there. And I think that as long as we stick to some really common values. So common values like respect, um, common values like empathy, um, common values and common morals where we um, pay attention to each other and be treating people like individuals, not um, throwing people into classes. I think that um, being Māori, I use a lot of Māori strategies and things from my own upbringing um, to help my students and to, but 
I do feel that because of my values, they're beneficial to any individual child or any individual person. So I'm not, um, wouldn't put a certain group in a box that every child or every person should be treated with respect and empathy and you should take the time out to speak to them, to speak to their families, to make a communication um, and a relationship with them. Yeah, that's how I feel. I think that if we're receiving money for three water assets, because Oranga Wai is a huge part of my push um, towards my campaigning and also something that I really want to focus on, that that money should really be redirected back into things that are water related. I think that um, there should definitely, we should definitely now with climate change coming, start looking into um, things like biodiverse water collection and storage, especially for our smaller rural communities who depend on water tanks um, to, to keep their houses running or keep their businesses running or their farms running, all of those sorts of things. So with climate change, change coming and possible droughts or possible rainy seasons, I think a feasibility study right now to try and address some of the predicted issues that are to come along, that that would go a long way in helping our rural communities. I think that in terms of the housing as well, when we're looking at um, increasing the, the capacity of probably the, the township where we're introducing new communities, is also looking at some biodiverse water collection, storage and um, dis distribution in new communities. So we're not always tapping into that same town supply water source that there can be some sort of um, uh, water collection place that actually helps to subsidise the collection that we get in our, in our taps and things like that. So there are definitely a lot of um, a lot of areas where if we are receiving money for waters, then we can actually put that money back into waters. Um, our storm waters, having our water um, flushed out, our, um, you know, so that's a huge thing. We could put money into that to trying to solve that problem or at least making steps towards solving that problem. Um, and also from an environmental stance as well, uh, and with the three waters reform and with the, um, the resource um, reforms also coming in, the resource management, is how, do, how can we assist um, our rural whānau and our farmers in terms of if they want to do things like carbon credits, um, riparian uh, water, uh, waterways planting with riparian plants, just things like that. So I really believe that if we're re to receive this much funding because of the water, that the, wa the money should go back into the water. Okay, so my closing statement is, please go on to Vote NZ. Um, I really want to encourage rangatahi, um, especially rangatahi, especially rangatahi Māori, um, that you need, to, you need to vote, you need to have a say, and now is the time for you to be able to do that. Um, I think previously that the, the whole voting system and the whole way um, local government was set up was that our tamariki, our rangatahi, who are between the ages of even younger, from about 15 to 25 to possibly even 30, unless you knew about it, unless it was something that was taught in your home, you didn't really engage and you didn't really participate. With the, with the inclusion of Māori wards, this is a really great opportunity for you guys to have a say. So my closing thing would definitely be please check if you are registered to vote on Vote NZ. If you are not registered to vote, please enrol to vote. Um, there is a huge change coming. There are a lot of governmental changes happening and with the inclusion of Māori wards, you can also now be included in this process in a way which you feel that you can connect to this, that you see these faces and you know them and you feel them and you see them and you talk to them. So my closing statement would be, kia kaha whanau, get out there and vote.